Oh, wow. Fam, look at the cheese. Flores here. Welcome back to the Love Lab. Today in Calabama cooking, we are making cheese stuffed meatballs. I don't even have words for it. It's as decadent as it sounds and I cannot wait to do it. Come on in the kitchen, guys. Let's cook. Okay, fam, so we're gonna start with our basic ingredients. I've got some yellow onions here that are diced up. I'm gonna start by getting that nice and soft and just so it's translucent. You can put it in the beef straight. You don't have to pre-cook them. I just like to because it kind of just, you know, make sure there's none of that rawness on there and it's a personal preference. We're also gonna be using some minced garlic, some dried herbs. I've got in here some dried oregano and thyme, a couple faves, some breadcrumbs, an egg to help bind it all together, and of course, lots of cheese. Now from a meat perspective, you guys, I'm using a mixture of ground beef and sausage, and I'm using hot sausage and mild sausage. And the reason I like to do that is number one, when you add sausage to the ground beef, it really ensures that you get a very flavorful meatloaf. I mean, really flavorful. And two, I, I just like sausage. So I put it in as many things as I can. <laughs> All right guys, so here we go. These are our onions coming together. Just gonna kind of sweat them down a little bit. Just let them start to do what they do, become a little translucent. I'm gonna add the garlic in here as well. Okay. And that's about one onion cut up and about two to three cloves of garlic. That's up to you how much you use. You know by now we're garlic people over here. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right, gonna get that going. See how we're just letting this kind of come together? Real simple. Now what we're gonna do with our ground beef here, we are going to mix this together, but we're not gonna go overboard, okay? A little more than normal, because we wanna have a firm meatloaf, but we're not gonna go crazy. You know how some people do all of this to it? That just makes it too firm, which, I mean, has its place, but I'm not feeling that. So, we're gonna do a good amount of mixing, okay? Here we go, look at that. See these vegetables? Oh, yes. Perfect, and now that that's right there, I'm gonna add in my dried herbs. See there? Oh, y'all, just hit me. It just hit me. And I'm gonna take a little pinch of Worcestershire sauce and just kind of wet the whistle. Just a little bit, like a teaspoon maybe or so. Okay. See that? Just, oh yes, this smells divine. Let's hit this with a little salt. There we go. Oh yeah, oh man. I'm telling you, just the smell alone of the onions, the garlic, and the herbs is worth it. I'm gonna put one more dash of this in here. Okay, there we go. All right, and now, we've got, now that these onions have become translucent, see how we're just trying to get them to kind of just wake up a little bit, let that garlic wake up as well. Go ahead and remove that from our heat. And here we are with our ground beef and our sausage. And I'm just gonna start to give it just a light. Just a light, can you see that? I'm just lightly starting to bring them together. I'm gonna do more, but I don't wanna overdo it. And it's very easy to. If you do seem to mix it too much, quote unquote too much, what will happen is it'll just be really firm, which may not be bad. Like I said, you can get good meatloaf sandwiches when it's really firm, but I just, I personally don't like it to be too hard. All right, I'm gonna add in these wonderfully opened up, that's what we'll call them, opened up vegetables. Mm. Look at it look good. Oh, y'all, let me move this out the way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and start bringing this together. Now be careful, because this is hot, okay? I should probably be using a, a spoon or something, but why would I do that? <laughs> Right? My hands are immune to temperature changes at this point anyway. The other benefit of using sausage is it ensures that your meatloaf keeps plenty of flavor and stays juicy. One of the big complaints with meatloaf is they dry out, you know what I mean? But if you use sausage in there, or even if you don't like sausage, you can use turkey sausage, because that's also gonna help you. You know what I'm saying? If you don't wanna use pork sausage. But y'all know me, I like sausage. All right, see how I'm, oh, oven's ready. <laughs> see how I'm just turning this over slightly in here? 
See, all I'm doing is really just kind of picking it up and putting it together. I'm not doing all that work. Here I've got some breadcrumbs I'm gonna add. Okay, it's gonna help keep it together. And I know you're thinking, should you put milk with the breadcrumbs? Some people do that. You don't need to do that. Not if you use sausage. But you can if you want to, baby, do what you wanna do. I ain't gonna talk about you. I'm not. If your family likes it, then it's perfect. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Look at that. And I'm using panko breadcrumbs because I just like them. Now, frequently when I make meatloaf, or maybe I should say usually when I make my meatloaf, I stuff it, I'm not stuff it, I add cheese into the mixture. So it's cheese going all through the meatloaf, which is divine. But this way we're gonna do this booger today. We're gonna stuff it with Italian cheeses, some Asiago, some Parmesan, some mozzarella, some of everything. Okay, now you see how I just turned this around and like that? That's all you need to do. And see, because the sausage is mixed in there, this is not drying out. <laughs> all right, now we're gonna make sure we use, just one egg is really all we need to help bind it because we don't want it to fall apart. So I'm just gonna lightly, just lightly. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna get that egg mixed all up in there. And that's, like I said, just to help it stay together, see? Push it in like that. Okay. Some people like to do their meat, don't use a glove when they mix the meatloaf. I don't know why, I just prefer it. Cause then I just take the glove off and my hands are clean. Okay, and we are ready to stuff and pack. So this is enough really for two good sized meatloaves. So I'm gonna see how we do this. So I'm gonna start here. I've got my baking tray right there next to me. I'm going to, well, you know what I need to do, one thing? I'm gonna put a little oil on the bottom of the tray. I'll have to clean this off in a second. I'm just gonna put a little olive oil down there so it doesn't stick, you know? Excuse me here. It just kind of, there, works. <laughs> okay, so we're first gonna do two, basically like two layers of meatloaf, okay? So we're gonna start with our first layer here. See that? I'm gonna put the bottom layer down. Move that out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna move this. I wanna make sure you guys can see what I'm doing, okay? Pushing this together nicely, putting it down. You see I'm continuing to shape it once I put it down. Oh yeah, this is nice and moist. I love that about using sausage in it and also about letting those vegetables sweat before we get going. It's a lot of moisture in here. And you can also see the herbs in here and the sausage. And I'm using hot and sweet sausage. Did I tell y'all that already? It'll mix up nicely in this ground beef. And we're using a relatively lean ground beef as well, which will also help us. Okay, so you see how we've got layer one down here? Okay, now we're gonna start with our cheese. And we're just going to load it up. See that? Yeah, yeah, I'm the, yeah. You, you see correctly. I know you're thinking, girl, that is too much cheese. I know, huh? It's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Because I want it to really be in there. I want it to be good. I want my kids and my husband to say, oh, what'd you do to this? And I'd be like, oh, just did a little something, something. <laughs> now I'm gonna go back to the meat. Bring this part together as well, and we're gonna put this right on top. Okay, see there? You can stuff this with anything. You can also stuff um, bacon in here if you wanted to. I thought about doing that. I ain't gonna lie, I did. I thought about it. Look at that. See how I'm putting this in here? I'm just gonna make this one big one. It's gonna take a while to bake probably, but that's okay. It'll be worth it in the end. Now, I want you to notice something I didn't mention. When I put the cheese in here, you see how I left a little bit on the edge, a little space on the edge? That was intentional, okay? And I did that because after I get all of my meat here around it, what I'm gonna do is come in like this. See that? See how I'm coming in on those sides and I'm forming it even more. Like that. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> now, on this side, if you can see it, there's a little cheese that's coming out there. So I'm just gonna take another little piece of my meat right here. Cover that up. You see that? That's all you, it's literally that easy. Ah, 
Okay, so we just have a little bit of meat left in here. We'll just make this into one nice big old meatloaf. Mix these nicely. And just spread it around like that. Okay. There we go. Uh, she's so pretty. <laughs> she's got garlic and cheese and all manner of goodness in her. All right, we're gonna put this in a 375 degree oven. It might take an hour or so because you really want this meat to cook all the way through. I'm gonna throw a stick of meat thermometer in there and you want it to get to about 165 degrees internal temperature so you'll know it's done. All right, guys, let's get her in the oven. She's just, I'm like just looking at her. Hey, she's pretty. Hey, girl, hi. All right, let's get this in the oven. So family, our meatloaf has been in the oven for about an hour. It looks really good on the outside. The internal temperature is not quite at 165 degrees. So I'm gonna glaze it and then put it back in. So here I've got about a cup of ketchup. And to that, I'm gonna add some brown sugar, okay? And a little bit of Worcestershire, Let's shake it up. All right, this is optional. I just like this sweet glaze on it. My kids like it, I like it, it works. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> You're like liable to break it trying to fix it, okay? <laughs> but I do like this place to be sweet if I'm gonna use it. Just wanna give it a nice little mix. Just ketchup and brown sugar. Make it as sweet or not sweet as you want it. Fair enough, right? <laughs> okay, and now we're just gonna put this on top here of our meatloaf. This meatloaf probably needs about another 10 minutes in the oven. It's almost at temperature. So we're just gonna spread this like so, it looks so good. You can see the cheese is starting to ooze a little bit out the side. You see that? Oh my God, I cannot wait. Okay, so. And you don't need a ton of this. Cause, I mean, it's not icing. We're not, it's not a cake. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I can't help it. I was about to start going down a real rabbit hole of foolishness there, but I'm gonna stop and come back. See, so I didn't do a lot. If you want more sauce, like if you're gonna serve with mashed potatoes or something, you can always make more and use it as like extra gravy or whatever. But I'm just gonna make enough to put on the meatloaf here. Go all around. And this will just give it a nice kiss of, of flavor, a little sweetness, not too sweet. We're not trying to make sugar loaf. That's a place I think that's too ski, isn't it, sugar loaf? <laughs> okay. All right, I'm sorry y'all, I'm quickly going down. There we go. Make sure I like the way this is all covered. Is that covered good up there, fam? All right, I'm depending on y'all, let me know. There we go. Okay, just like that. And what you can do, I don't think I'm going to though. You can take this a little cheese that we had left and you can actually sprinkle the cheese on the top if you want to. I don't know, I don't think we'll do that today. What do y'all think? Yes, family? Yes, no, yes, no. Yes. Okay, fam. Because you said so. Take a little bit of this leftover cheese and just sprinkle it on the top. Because it doesn't need a lot of time left in the oven, so it's not like it's going to mess up. It's almost at temperature. It's around 162, 163 degrees. So I'm just going to give it a few more minutes to finish getting where it needs to be. Oh, that looks good. Oh, well, we're going to leave this a little bit, right? Okay, let's pop this back in real quick. A few more minutes. And then we will be ready to take it out and dig in. Well, family, I put this back in the oven, like I said, for about another 10, 15 minutes. The cheese melted and browned beautifully. Got a little more ooze going on here. I've let this rest for just a few minutes. And what I'm gonna do is start to loosen around the bottom, like this, okay? And I'm going to move it onto the serving platter. And I'm not gonna lie, y'all, I'm nervous right now. <laughs> I'm hoping this moves as smoothly as I'm hoping that it's supposed to. I'm loosening the bottom. It's, it smells, oh, it's hot, sir. It smells, I should put the glove on, right? <laughs> it smells absolutely divine in here. The cheese is oozing out a little bit on these sides. And um, I, I would say, though, make sure that you get it all loose before you try to just go and move it because, you know, it only makes sense, doesn't it? Okay. Let me see, I think feel like the middle here is still, there we go. See how it's starting to slide? That's what I wanted. Oh man, you guys, this is so beautiful. I cannot wait to serve this to my family. Let me try to change my angle. This 
big. Usually I would make two meatloaves. I kind of did, I guess. Let me see. Let me get it moved. I'm going to start loosening it. I don't want to mess up my shirt. Here we go. Let me start moving it towards me. Just a bit. This is why I put it also on that foil so we would have a way to easily move it. There we go. Okay. All right, y'all. This is, in fact, the scariest part of the whole dish. <laughs> okay. Getting it off the tray and onto the serving platter. So I've loosened it and there. Nicely done. Oh good, just a little foil can go over there. And those foil pieces are on there. Oh, perfect, okay. Get that cheese off. Oh man, look at this, you guys. <laughs> wow. This is beautiful. Oh my goodness. So we want to give this a cut so we can see the cheese in there. And I'll pretty that platter up. I'll pretty it up more for the picture. <laughs> Let me get a knife here. My slicer and fork. Oh boy. Where do we even begin with something this gorgeous? You can see the little bits of oil oozing out of her and the cheese. Okay, I'm gonna try here. I'm gonna start here. Hold on. Let's see what happens. And we gave it a little bit of a, a little edge, right? So we shouldn't have cheese yet, right? Not right at this edge. Oh my God, but look at that. Okay, fam. Oh, wow. Look, I moved it so you can see what's happening. Do you see the ooze coming? Look at that. So as we cut into this, there's more cheese and it's gonna ooze out just like this. Oh, OMG, fam. OMG. <laughs> this is beautiful. Oh my God. I should let it cool a little bit more, shouldn't I? <laughs> Just one more little slice. One more little one. The smoking is so hot. I'm cutting very gently. That meat is cooked perfectly in there. Let's see here. And here's our next slice. And let's see. Oh, wow. Fam, look at the cheese coming out. Let me see. Okay. How I'm gonna do this? How how I'm gonna do this? I'm gonna push it back like this, so you can see the cheese. Can you see that oozing out? Oh my god! And it's nice and hot and melty. Unbelievable! Looks delicious. Can't wait to dig in. Thank you for joining me today on Alabama Cooking. We made the most decadent and beautiful cheese stuffed meatloaf I've ever had. I cannot wait. I'm literally a little giddy about this thing. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, fam. I will see you next time right back here in the Love Lab for more Calabama cooking with your girl, Chef Glorious. That's me. Happy cooking. Oh, man, I can't wait to eat this thing. It's just oozing out. It looks so good.